Astros have the second best record in baseball. So you would think that they'll be like, oh, we'll just be in cruise control. We'll just not worry about things. Yes, we have a nagging injury to Jose Altuve. Yes, we have a little bit issue with Jeremy Pena. No, that's not the case. They went ahead and traded some of their catching depth for Mauricio Dubon. He is a uh, center fielder. He can play some shortstop. He can play the second base. Ex exactly what the Astros needed. And we'll talk about this and more on this special edition of the Locked on Astros podcast, which starts now. Hello and welcome to Locked on Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talk Astros. Find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. And we are super excited that the Astros are on an 11 game winning streak, and the club record is 12 um, games, and the Astros are looking to do that later today. But the Astros are not just sitting on their hands. They're not just saying, oh, we're hoping that Jeremy Pena gets better. We're hoping that his right knee is not that bad. We're hoping, I know that they said they took out Jose Altuve after he tripped him uh, over himself after making that play or trying to make that play. And I know that people across baseball who hate Jose Altuve, they were making fun of that. They're like, oh, the little guy tripped over himself. But I know that Dusty Baker took him out as a precautionary reason. But uh, we're going to talk about how uh, James Click said that the results – of that was the kind of led up to the decision to trade for who they traded for today and why Michael Papirski was the guy that got traded. And we'll talk about this and more on today's podcast, but make sure you keep on making us your first listen every day, whether it's on YouTube, keep on subscribing to us. It takes a second. All you do have to do is go YouTube, just search the Locked On Astros podcast, press that subscribe button and go ahead and give us a like while you're there and go ahead and listen to us on your way to work, on your way home to work, uh, wherever you're, you know, wherever you do it, just make us your first listen on uh, and uh, keep on rocking, rock, rocking on as the Astros are keep on doing. I mean, uh, who knows how long this winning streak can go on, but um, it's glorious. When the Astros are on, this is one of the best teams in baseball to watch. And I think uh, we're going to keep on talking about this winning streak going on and on and on because this is just it's just glorious to see how good this team can be. So uh, let's go and get, talk about this breaking news. And at first, um, when I heard about this trade, I'm like, oh, uh, they just traded minor league depth for minor league depth. But this guy, uh, Mauricio Dubon, is actually a uh, great player. I mean, not great, but he's not a superstar or anything. But this is a, a player who kind of reminds me of Ledmus Diaz, somebody who could play multiple positions, somebody who could play center field, somebody who could play shortstop, he, somebody that can play – um, second base. And this is a guy that's got a lot of excitement. He's an excitable player. He has broke into the major leagues as a young player, and he's not a free agent until after the 2026 season. So this is somebody that the Astros have a lot of team control over, and he's still young. Yes, he hasn't had a lot of success. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But what led up to this? And uh, so, first of all, Jeremy Pena left the game um, a few, like three or four days ago, with the injury, right knee discomfort, and uh, so he has not played. And uh, they're saying that he potentially would not play. And uh, then uh, Jose Altuve, even when he came back, um, he he's been playing like a superstar again. The Astros been on this winning streak, but then he fell all over himself. Uh, on Friday night, and uh, he he was pulled for precautionary reasons. He probably won't play. Dusty Baker was asked, "Well, what do you know about uh, Jose Altuve?" And they said, "He said, well, I don't know, but he's probably not going to play uh, tomorrow uh, today, which is Saturday." So, uh, so that leaves the Astros with Ledmus Diaz, who James Click on Saturday said that he was dealing with a little bit of a hand issue, which is why we didn't see him a lot, and so. Uh, but Led Ms. Diaz is like, I, I got to get over this. I got to go and play with Jeremy Pena back. So 
the fact that the Astros made this showed that they potentially may not have that much trust in Nico Goodrum. Good, Goodrum has not been lighting the w- world on fire. I know he's somebody that they went out and signed to a um, deal this offseason just to kind of shore up the, uh, the team, but he just hasn't really done every, anything quite yet like they wanted him to. So I'm looking up exactly what his stats are and what his contract is. So he signed a one year, uh, $2.1 million deal with the Astros. And uh, so, but he's batting 170, sorry, 128. He has one RBI, one stolen base through 39 at bats. Uh, He's maybe a better shortstop. He's not really the best second baseman. I think I said it wrong the other day in the show. He could play some good first base. Uh, But I don't know if the Astros would maybe DFA him. That's something that I'm not here to really talk about. Uh, We can kind of talk about the moving pieces because um, Dubon has to be added to the roster um, on Sunday because he'll be added to this team. But the Astros didn't feel like they had enough on this roster right now, not necessarily for the next week, but this is for a move for the rest of the season. And yes, you have Jose Siri. Jose Siri has played pretty well, but don't forget that Devon can actually play the outfield as well. He plays a really good um, center fielder as well. So yes, um, according to James click, he will be joining the team on Sunday in Washington and he will be on the active roster. So there was a open spot on the 40 man roster. It was on 39 players. So they will not have to DFA anybody or just to make a spot on the roster for him, but they will have to open up a spot on the active roster, 26 man roster. So they will have to do that at some point. So, Uh, I don't think you're going to see them take anybody from the pitching staff. The pitching is going to have to stay the way it is, especially with, um, with playing how many consecutive games they're playing. Uh, You're already, uh, I don't see them trading any pitchers. I don't see them uh, sending any pitching down. So I I think the pitching is going to stay the way it is. So it's going to come down to somebody um, on the offense or something like that. So we'll talk about that in a second, but let's talk about uh, Mauricio Dubon. Um, so far this year in 46 at bats, he's batting 245 with uh, eight RBIs. He scored 10 runs. He's batting 239 on the season. His OPS is 636 and he has OPS plus of 80, which is below major league average. So yes, it's not somebody who's you get overly excited about. This is somebody um, uh, you're not getting him to be a superstar. You're getting him to be a decent backup, somebody who can come in and give you adequate um, playing time at shortstop. Somebody play, give you adequate playing time at second base. So you don't have to have Jose Altuve playing every day at second base every day. Um, Jeremy Pena every day at shortstop. And uh, I know led Ms. Diaz can play there. So, um, it's so yes. Um, I, somebody saying, is it between Siri or Goodrum possibly, but I don't see Siri going anywhere. Um, Siri has not, um, done as well, but Siri is a relatively young and expensive player, but I, I don't know. That's not my decision to make. That is Dusty Baker. That's James click at this point. But uh, what James Click did say is that he does not anticipate that either one of Jose Altuve or Jeremy Pena will be hitting the IL. So they will just be kind of on the uh, down low for a couple of days. And so we'll see what happens. So um, uh, so uh, I guess um, Brett's on the podcast, too. And um, Click says... Um, so I don't know if Brett's saying that it's it's going to be Siri. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if it's going to be – I don't know who it's going to be. I Like, I don't want to go ahead and go talk about speculation. And, no, we shouldn't have traded for Robel Garcia. Why are we doing this, guys? Why are you doing this with me? We're talking about Mauricio Dubon here. Come on. Uh, this is a guy who is just 24 years uh, – sorry, I take that back. He's not 20 – he's 27 years old. He is a active player from Honduras and uh, he was drafted in the 26th round of the 2013 um, uh, by the Red Sox. He, he's been in two trades, I believe. And uh, he's only 
and his uh, technically his service time is only 1.162 years. So uh, like I said, he's arbitration eligible next year um, and he's free agent in 2027. So the Astros have some team uh, control over him. His highest home run year was last year in 2021, where he hit five home runs with 22 RBIs in uh, 2020. He hit uh, 274 with a 726 OPS, and he had four home runs that year. But the most uh, uh, bats he had in season was 187. This is not an everyday player. This is not, uh, not a guy who's going to be your everyday type guy. This is a fill-in. This is a guy to just come in and just do what you uh, you need him to do. And you know what? Speaking of which, uh, if you need something to just kind of give you that that pick me up and uh, just something to get you through the day, why don't you try a built bar? Imagine dipping your finger into that plastic tub of a birthday cake frosting and then opening your eyes and realizing that it was only 150 calories and 16 grams of protein. That's what it's like to eat a birthday cake puff from built. I just received my birthday birthday cake puffs and I've never had anything like this before. They're available right now, and we can, can't promise that uh, they will be there tomorrow. So get go get them today at Built.com. I had some. I gave some to Brett because he liked them so much. He's like, Eric, can I have some of yours? I'm like, uh, sure, whatever. And, and if you haven't tried the puffs, I'll let you in on a little secret because that's what friends do. A chocolate-covered marshmallow protein bar. Yeah, you heard me. This delicious flavored marshmallow covered in 100% real chocolate. Make every day your birthday with uh, Built's cu- uh, birthday cake puffs. Built has taken delicious experience of biting into a f- fresh slice of birthday cake and robed in 100% white chocolate and added sprinkles. With 150 calories, 16 grams of protein, and only 9 grams of sugar, this limited time flavor is an amazing option if you're looking for a healthy way to get flavor and a variety in your day. All Built Puffs are covered in 100% real chocolate. That means with Built, you can eat healthy and enjoy doing it. Go to Built.com and use their promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your first order. And while you're doing that, and if you want to bet like Mattress Mac is doing, and you want to bet on the Astros winning it all like he did, maybe not invest so much, but our our partners at Bet Online continues to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. F- find out all the latest news, odds, and sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs, the Major League Baseball scores, fights, and even next year's uh seasons nfl futures i know the schedule just came out last week and everybody's talking about well i think the texans are gonna win this game why i think texans win this game maybe but bet online is uh, your continued source for all the sports wagering information from live betting to the playoffs esports and more head to the website today and use your mobile device to learn more about the trends actions and more bet online it's where the game starts so getting back to this whole trade from today. So my Michael Perpiski is a guy that was kind of lost in the whole uh, shuffle in triple a. He was a good catcher. He was known more for his defense, defensive ability. He was a decent hitter, but um, he was not even playing catcher this year because you have Corey Lee over there. Uh, and then you, um, you have, uh, I think it was uh, Sierra that, the second catcher over there and he just wasn't getting a lot of time and he was playing a lot of first base and the apparently the giants have been wanting Papirski for a long time and hopefully he gets a shot i don't know if he's gonna play right away over there but uh he's gonna have to hit if he wants to make it to the big leagues because um this guy is a great defensive ability hit catcher but um I know that uh, he's excited to join a new team, a new uh, excite, a new a possibility of just joining a new team because Corey Lee, he was rising, and uh, then you have some other catching prospects that were probably going to overlap Papirski. I know Papirski, uh, a lot of people were looking at him, but at the same time, I don't think that um, he was going to get a shot here. But uh, Dubon said that he was excited to be part of this winning organization with the Astros. And he said, I go hard every day. So rock on. 
I, that's kind of the philosophy that George Springer had that he goes hard every day. He, um, so I don't know if he runs into walls like George Springer did, but, uh, yeah. So James click did say that Dubon will join the Astros in DC tomorrow. A corresponding move will be made at that time. So the Astros, in other words, need time to decide what they're going to do. Nico Goodrum or Jose Siri. Jose Siri does have options. Nico Goodrum doesn't really have those options. And you also paid him a lot of money to sign with the Astros. So that's something that you could do. So Dubon has been a useful bench utility piece. Uh, he has a... Um, uh, 88 career WRC plus, and that's about a 12% below league average. He has solid defense at multiple positions, and he has a 1.4 uh, wins above replacement, according to fan graphs. So uh, that's over his career, which is very limited. So um, we'll, we'll see what happens with this trade. But um, I just like the fact that the Astros – didn't just sit on their hands. They're like, okay, we know that Pena may miss some time and we need somebody who can play shortstop and nothing against the lead Miss DS. Uh, but lead Miss DS is not the strongest at shortstop. And I know that uh, Goodrum can play shortstop, but the Astros have not been super excited about his bat so far. So, um, so as Brett says on the chat, he says, uh, remember that Pena has not played a single 162 game season. So expect more rest. So that's something um, to say. And uh, he also said that series isn't going anywhere. We did a show. Don't um, don't speculate. Uh, what do you think? Um, so Goodrum or Siri, if you say Siri, you are probably not correct. So. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be Siri going anywhere. I think, um, I mean, it, like I said, it's not really my job to really kind of make that decision. It's going to be something, uh, it's going to be a Click or Baker making that decision, but we'll have to see what happens here. And I know somebody says that, um, somebody put a long post here, but uh, so we'll have to see what happened here. But one good thing that to notice is that, Jake Myers is throwing two bases at high intensity. And so after following the sh shoulder issues last year in surgery, that's a strong move. So he should be coming back at some point and the team will have conversations uh, about possible rehab assignment coming up. So that would be a big, big move for him. And then also I saw a note that uh, Forrest Whitley uh, continues to do well. We're hoping to get him out there for some rehab games in the next few weeks if I, if, if the calendar is right for him. So, uh, so it looks like some of the injured players are coming back. And like I said, I don't think this will be long-term injuries for Jeremy Pena or, or, um, or, uh, sorry, uh, Jose Altuve lost my train of thought, but who knows this may be a, uh, to kind of, ease it right now maybe we see somebody like a Ludmus diaz hit the il for a little bit just to say oh well uh we we don't want to lose goodrum right now so the astros have just a couple options like uh for something like that so i don't know i'm curious to see what happens what do you all think it happens here so um so uh, world traveler says i think dubon is a good pickup guy the guy's the uh, this is guy who bunted against the Padres. The Padres were whining because the Giants were blowing them out at that point. Okay. So he's a player who likes to agitate uh, people. Okay. So it's like somebody who bunts uh, during a no hitter. Okay. All right. Somebody like that. Well, that's not what he did, but uh, we'll see. So um, somebody jokes around is that uh, Goodrum has OPS plus of five. He's on borrowed time. I don't, think his OPS plus is that bad, but, um, I'm pretty sure it's pretty bad right now. Uh, and somebody asks who has, um, more value of Siri or Goodrum. I think that Siri makes more happen than Goodrum's to this point. Uh, it's not just about the power, but I just think that what Siri does, like if you look at the, um, run saved. Uh, I saw a graphic the other day that uh, series up there with trout in terms of center fielders with a defensive run saved so far, and he's a part-time player. 
So what Siri can do, yeah, he can um, he can irritate you sometimes with the bad plays or uh, striking out, but uh, he can also look majestic out there. And but he can also be on borrowed time because Jake Myers will be coming back at some point. So who knows what the whole story is? And if Dubon doesn't really work out, then maybe Dubon can go down to AAA as well at some point. So. Uh, we'll see. And uh, definitely this is something that Brett and I can discuss on Sunday show. But uh, like, I think that uh, Siri is uh, like uh, Jose says, Siri's presence is important on this team. He, you need somebody who is um, excitable and somebody who's brings that passion, the whole like arrow thing. I don't know if he still does the arrow, but, um, but Alvarez is just crushing it. And uh, yeah, it's baseball is not talking about it. Like um, I saw um, somebody talking about the Astros or like, yeah, well, it seems like the Astros are on a 10 game winning streak. And we had not too many people are giving us credit, but uh, Brett, I don't know if you realize this, the Astros have the second best record in baseball, how the tables have turned. I mean, it just seems like the, like a few weeks ago, we're all depressed and saying, wow, this team can't hit this team can't pitch. Where's the bullpen? And now it's all kind of worked itself out. Is it going to be like this all season? Who knows? They're going to have their ups and downs, but uh, there there definitely is. Oh, the OPS plus is five. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. The OPS. <laughs> okay. Goodrim's uh, OPS plus is five, according to uh, baseball reference. Okay. So that was not a joke. Okay. All right. Cool. So, yeah, uh, that's pretty awesome. So, yeah, but uh, he has struggled this year, and in the past he has been a pretty good player. So I think that the Astros may have to. You've seen them cut ties with Baez already this year because he was not performing. Maybe they'll have to do the same thing with Goodrum because Goodrum is uh, is somebody who's had success in the past, but the Astros got him for cheap for a reason. So, uh, this is definitely something we will kind of discuss. Um, uh, well, John, uh, we kind of, I already discussed that earlier. Uh, they said that he's thrown to bases right now and there could potentially start a rehab soon. They didn't put a timetable up, but um, they're not going to rush him back because Jake Myers could be a potential at a good part of this team. And I saw that, um, uh, oh, yeah, the I see Goodrum, his uh, WRC plus is four. So that was correct. And the um, and that uh, led Ms. Diaz's WRC plus is 69 on the season. So overall, if you're looking at the utility players on the Astros right now, they just have not gotten it done this season. Diaz is batting 191, but I really don't see them parting with Diaz. I think that he's too valuable as a veteran player, but. I, I see them um, getting rid of Goodrum over Diaz or or Siri at this point. So, um, but I'm not going to really say, yeah, this is the Eric Heisman lock of the day happening. But I just that's just my my thoughts is that I think that Goodrum may be on the way out over the other guys. But uh, so yeah, we'll have to see. No, no worry, Joe. Uh, well, John, uh, that's totally fine. So um, who knows that I. I think that uh, Mauricio Dubon, uh, he seems like a excitable guy. Maybe he comes to this team and he just builds on this excitement and we'll see like that. So, um, and like Brett says, this team has even started hitting hundred percent. So we'll see what happens when this team really starts hitting. And you know, what was a good sign? Yuli Gurriel hitting a home run the other day. That was epic. That was maybe a sign that, Good times are ahead for Yuli Gurriel. So we'll be back with another episode of Locked on Astros podcast on Sunday. And don't forget to make us your first listen every day. And welcome to Houston, Mauricio Dubon and Ghost Rose. And we'll talk to you soon.